Hello, welcome to introductory workshop practical session of National Supercomputing Center. Uh, let's go quickly go through the prerequisites for this workshop. Uh, we have an introductory workshop handbook located. I will be sharing the URL for uh, this handbook where you can download and follow through. Um, just in case if you don't have the book but you can go through all the steps which I am describing in this workshop as such. So uh, we have um, uh, certain prerequisites uh, from Microsoft operating systems usually we don't have a SSH client or rather if there is exist any SSH client its capabilities are very limited. So we have to rely on uh, some of the open source or you know freely available tools in the internet. For example, uh, Putty or Mobile Extra. These are the two tools so which you can use one of them for uh, for SSH connectivity to any Linux machine, not only to NSSA. NSSA predominantly we have the Linux operating system. Uh, that's how we have seen in the previous introductory um, theory workshop. So um, in this workshop, which we are going to talk about logging into the system doing the file transfers, job submissions, etc. So we can find these tools would be helpful for connecting to the system to perform all these operations. Next thing is the FileZilla is a file transfer uh, software which also can be downloaded from internet without any uh, cost. So you can download the uh, application, install it in your system and do the file transfer uh, through FileZilla. Um, why I would suggest these particular softwares are Putty is a very small footprint, no root permissions, nothing is required. You can just download it from internet and just connect to any Linux system through this very easily. Mobile XTOM, a little more flexibility you have. It looks like pretty simple, but it has a lot of uh, components in that. For example, you can not only do a SSH from uh, the terminal, you can also do a simple file transfer, do a remote editing of the um, files, etc. So I'm not going to go through the entire usage of Mobile Extra, which you should be able to explore through finding uh, online resources. However, we would be connecting to uh, NSSC through Mobile Extra today. And uh, the FileZilla, there is the major, or I know, um, the uh, tool which I strongly recommend to do any file transfers because it's not only effective, it uh, it is much more faster compared to any other tools in my experience. Next thing in the prerequisite sec sec section, you can see um, there is a basic um, text editing software which is called VI. This is uh, most common in Linux platforms. If you are new to Linux, you may have to learn any one of the um, text editing tools. Uh, maybe the VI would be the easiest one to start with. So VI uh, file name is the starting command, which you can edit the file name uh, using VI editor. There are two modes in VI. One is insert mode, another one is command mode. Through insert mode, you can type, edit, delete the lines. Whereas in the command mode, you have to give some commands such, such as uh, saving the file, writing and quitting the file and uh, quit without saving. These are the commands which you can use. So in this example, we can see if you go to uh, command mode by hitting the escape key, you can do colon W Q which means uh, colon, write and quit is the command. Similarly, Q exclamation is quit without saving. So these are the very basic or, you know, starting steps for a learning VI editor. But there are a lot more things that can be done using VI editor, which you can explore all by yourself. Um, we have some examples, uh, scripts, which we are going to edit in the later section, just to make note of, uh, these. Please refer to the uh, basic Linux guide which will be helpful on the VI editor and um, download a soft copy of a PDF of this handbook 
from slash app workshops introductory directory or i give you another link where you can download this presentation or the the, the work workbook also as well some of the example job submission scripts which we are going to use in this particular example or in submit example 1.pbs the first submission script example for simple serial jobs and submit hyphen mpa.pbs is the second job submission script example for mpi based applications a third one is submit hyphen gpu.pbs which is third submission script example for gpu based applications submit r.pbs is a fourth submission script example for r applications singularity hyphen tensorflow.pbs is the fifth submission script which we are going to use as an example for some of the ai uh, usages using singularity images all right let's get to the exercise uh, one which we will be heading to the portal where we can enroll ourselves um, only the users from ntu nus a star sutd or sp tp and smu are eligible to enroll themselves so we can see the list of uh, uh, the enrolled or allowed institutions through the portal once you head over to user.nssc.ac you can see it's a welcome note and there is a login uh, uh, button available here once you click on login you will be redirected to a page where the allowed institution names are listed here select on the page or the link of the respective institution to head to the login page of that particular institute uh, once you put your login details it comes back again to this portal to set your password for nssc the user guide is located under help.nssc.sg user guides user enrollment guide so here we can see the step by step instructions on different uh, institutions some um, some of the steps may be slightly different however the crux of the overall um, steps is going to be the same so users will get to log in to the last page where the login id is displayed and user have a privilege to select set or reset the password and ssh keys um, setting the password is very important because we have a um, 90 day user id expiration policy wherein we user who has not not reset their password after 90 days the user will be expired um, to activate the account there is another 90 days of grace period those details are available in the FAQs under help.nssc.sg. So this is the first exercise. In the exercise 2, we will be connecting to NSCC VPN. Of course, this is only specific to the direct users who will be connecting to aspire.nscc.sg. However, for the all the other users, um, A star, NUS, NTU, they must connect through uh, their organization VPN and connect to uh, their respective login hosts. You can find the login host information under help.nssc.sg um, FAQ section. All right, um, so in case if there is any issue uh, with their organization or the login nodes of uh, NTU, NUS, or A star, in such case, they they should be able to log into NSSC VPN also as well. Uh, we are not stopping, but the VPN which is installed for NSSC is catered for a small set of users. If the user base is increasing, then you see the slow response from the system. Therefore, we don't recommend to use uh, NSSC VPN for all the users. Yeah, as I described in the previous section, in the previous video, um, in the theoretical section, we can see there are dedicated login nodes placed in their respective sites. So you have much higher speed which you can enjoy when you are connecting to the organization instead of to, uh, to NSCC uh, VPN. 
Okay, connecting to the NSSC VPN. Once we install the NSSC VPN, going through the procedure uh, from um, the user guide located under help.nssc.sg again. So you can find the user guide to connect to the VPN. Okay, you have uh, Windows and Mac, two different sections. So once we install the ap application, we can see a traffic some like something like this in the taskbar where you mouse over you can see the Sophos VPN client as a um, as a tooltip. Once you click on it and uh, connect to it, okay, it asks for the user ID and password. Here we can we are presented with the user ID and password dialog box where we need to input NSSC user ID and password plus OTP combination. The OTP is generated in Sophos Authenticator app. Yeah, once we logged in successfully, we can see the traffic light turn to the green light in the taskbar. And once we open the um, mobile extra, once the prompt is ready, we need to type ssh aspire.nscc.sg hyphen l fsg1. So uh, fsg1 is my login ID and hyphen l is the command which you need to use. So fsg1 needs to be replaced with your respective login ID. All right. So it's asking for the password. Now, uh, when I type the password, the characters are invisible. So no need to worry whether uh, the characters are vi is visible or are invisible when you are typing. You just need to type the password without the OTP key. So once you log into the system, there is a lot of information displayed at the login prompt. This is called message of the day or MOTD. In this, some of the things which we need to importantly make note of are uh, the message of the day, which states, you know, uh, uh, welcome to Aspire 1 to list the available environment modules, do module avail to purge the loaded modules, do module purge. To see the list of all jobs in the queue, run gstat. The my quota command is available to view your quota limits for home and scratch. Um, and there is a maintenance notification for now. Um, however, this may not be the case uh, uh, when you are logging in. We have an upcoming maintenance which is in the December from 18th. Friday to 21st December Monday that's the reason why we can see the manner banner here uh, after that we can see some of the utilization reports from past one week the entire time and some of the month uh, usage reports and uh, the projects which I am part of including the personal project and any other projects which I am part of so if users have uh, multiple projects they have a multiple list of projects displayed in this place. So finally, we have a notice on the purging policy. Purging policy is implemented on scratch directory and files which have not been accessed within last 30 days will be purged automatically. For more information, visit help.nssc.sg FAQs. So um, scratch directory, as we are mentioning in the earlier uh, uh, video, that is uh, the theoretical part. Uh, we were already mentioning that scratch has a 30 day purge policy. It's, there is a small side note. Um, scratch file system is uh, too huge. We have many files put in there. So it's not mandatory that you after 30 days, your files get may be deleted. So there is a chance the files could be deleted, but because 
that is the nature of the file system you must be very careful to have necessary backups from scratch directory usually what i would suggest is to copy the files only for the duration of uh, job running once the job is finished take out the files from scratch that's it let's uh, get back to the presentation so you can download this workshop handbook from uh, this url help.nsc.sg/wp-content/workshop-handbook-august-2020.pdf Exercise 1 from uh, workshop handbook, we have already done this. So user uh, enrolling process to uh, um, through user.nssc.sg workshop, sorry. Exercise 1 from workshop handbook, we have already gone through this procedure. Uh, we will be heading over to user.nssc.sg and enroll uh, there. However, there is a user guide which is available at help at nssc.sg where you can uh, enroll yourself for all non-stakeholder users you need to contact bizdev at nssc for new account all right uh, let's get into this part um the login nodes which i was mentioning earlier also as well so we have a login node clusters available each of the compasses uh, like a star um, we have a, a login node cluster placed in NSSC network itself. However, NSSC network is connecting through the A-star. So, A-star users have a local access to the systems. Whereas, uh, NUS and NTU, they have a dedicated login nodes placed in NSSC and NTU networks. So, users who are connecting through their network, that means from NUS network or NTU network, they will be connecting to their login node cluster um, in within the campus. And um, there is a high-speed internet interconnectivity link between login node cluster to NSSC cluster, which is 40 Gbps and 80 Gbps respectively for NUS and NTU. Uh, for su 2 users, it's slightly, slightly different. Um, the users um, connecting through the campus, the su 2 users connecting through the campus will be logging into the shared nodes, uh, NSSC 01, 03 and 04. Um, which is sutt.nssc.sg your uh, host name however when they are connecting um, outside the campus they have to connect through nssc vpn they don't have access through nssc vpn to nssc clusters so they must log into nssc vpn to access it for a star ntu and nus uh, this user must connect through uh, their organization vpn and it and connect to um, campus login nodes or remote login nodes. Uh, moving forward to the exercise number three, for um, you can refer to the host names in help.nssc.sg FAQ section. However, this is the typical host names you can find for A star users, A star.nssc.sg, for NTU users, ntu.nscc.sg. For NUS users, nus.nscc.sg. For SUTD users, sutd.nscc.sg. For direct users or who are connecting through NSSC VPN, the host name changes to aspire.nscc.sg. Uh, let's talk about uh, user environment. So uh, each user, once they uh, log into the system, um, they will be getting a home directory of 50 GB and scratch with 100 TB which is again 30 days purge policy which we have just now seen uh, when we logged into the system and there is a project directory based on the approval um, it could be whatever the approved amount of storage will be allocated to the project directory. So the quota information can be seen with the quota comments I will probably will show it later. Uh, 
Okay, uh, so my ID is slightly different for um, because mine is an administrator account and I will be doing all kind of researches on my accounts at uh, first in first place. So to see the quota, you need to type my quota command, which shows NSSE home directory, what is the disk space or quota allocated and the scratch and how much the quota is allocated. If you wanted to know a particular project um, uh, directory space um, or project quota, we can just issue the command my quota hyphen p and the project id. So in this case there is no space allocated for this project that's the reason why we don't see any project space displayed here. As a user, you can try and uh, find out the information. Aspire 1 projects. So um, basically for the stakeholder users such as NTU, NUS, ASTAR and SUTD only, we have 100,000 CPU hours uh, um, which is allocated for lifetime for these um, users. For all other users, um, it depends on uh, how much is allocated by the BizDev team. Um, as a side note, the new stakeholders such as Singapore Poly, um, Temasek Poly or SMU, they are getting 10,000 CPU hours in their personal project. Uh, for more information, please refer to the FAQ section under help.nscc.sg. To apply the project, head over to projects.nscc.sg you need to input uh, CPU hours and this quota and who are the members of the projects. There are a lot of other details also need to be filled in projects portal um, when the time of at the time of uh, requesting for a project. Please remember that uh, this project cycle is twice a year. That means there is a call for projects announced by projects admin team wherein you can register for a new project or you can extend an existing project. For all non-stakeholder users, um, you may have to uh, contact BizDev at NSC for uh, um, purchasing a particular package. Okay, let's go through the transferring of files. Exercise 5 and 6 from workshop handbook. Um, in the 4, we can see my quota command which shows uh, how much is the disk space allocated and my quota hyphen p project id to find out how much is allocated for the project directory. So the project related commands we can see my projects when we issue this command we can see what are the projects allocated to uh, uh, a person, a user. Okay, we can see the projects allocated to me. So each user may have different types of projects allocated to themselves. So if there is no projects allocated, you will see no projects displayed in this particular except the personal project. In case if the user doesn't have even project personal project, you don't see any projects here. Okay, so this is about my projects command. The project summary command is again to display the project information. Uh, at the time of login, we see some of the information of accounting. However, this information is cached overnight. For accurate information or up-to-date information, please use this project summary command. Okay, uh, again, my usage command also gives you the statistics and my usage hyphen A command gives all the jobs which are submitted and how much is the utilization per project etc all the details are uh, per per job wise you can find the information with my usage hyphen e command uh, let's get into the exercise number five wherein we will start with the filezilla okay and the filezilla software is open here so the interface is pretty similar simple uh, we have a host name user id and password and finally it looks for a port which is going to put automatically. Let's see. Um, here we can see the similar information presented here. 
use uh, users has to be specific on what host name they are putting in. For direct users, it's going to be aspire.nssc.sg. For all other host names, you can refer to the um, description which I have given before. So let me log into Aspire one sftp colon slash less aspire dot nscc dot sg. Let me put my user ID and password. Upon clicking the quick connect, it quickly connects to um, NSCC where in the right section we can see the files from remote server and the left side we can see the local files. If I wanted to download something, for example, slash app workshops slash introductory, hit enter. I can find all the files located under this. Maybe I can just download um, the handbook here, right click and download or I can choose a desktop here. I mean, I can choose a location where I can download. I want to download the file and just drag and drop here. The file transfer progress is shown in the bottom uh, portion of the tool and the progress. So once the file is transferred, we can find it in our uh, documents directory or wherever the file is transferred to. This is how we can transfer from NSCC to your local desktop. Vice versa, we can also transfer the files from local machine to um, remote machine. So uh, I can only transfer the files to the locations where I have access to. I cannot write in um, locations like slash app and stuff like that. So I can just go to my home directory, fsg1. So in this problem, I can just go to scratch and uh, maybe uh, let me create a new directory for today. mkdir um, trainee underscore intro and I just create mkdir uh, workshop underscore intro and enter cd workshop underscore intro Currently, there are no files in this uh, directory. Let me copy the submit.sh script from here to my scratch directory. So I navigate to the directory where I wanted to transfer the files to. I just drag and drag the files, drag and drop the files and I can see the files uh, copied to my remote directory. Okay, so this is how we can do the file transfer between NSCC and our local desktop and from local desktop to NSCC. Now, in the next step, we will be going through the presentation. Um, we can see the software environment. So to um, see what is the software environment we have, we use the modules command. So the first command which we are going to use is module avail, which displays all the available modules in the system. Module avail command presents the entire list of um, module files. So if we wanted to know a particular application um, and we know uh, it may start with certain um, name, we can just type this way. Module, a while, composer, XE. So it displays all the Intel compiler versions we have in the system. 
So if I wanted to load a particular version of uh, compiler shoot, I can only load that one with module load and the module name. Okay, so if you want to see what are the modules already loaded, we need to type the command module list. And if we don't want to use this module, I wanted to change the module to something different. I can use module purge, which will clean up the entire environment. And once we, use, once we do the module purge, we can see whether any modules are available, I mean, uh, loaded or not. We can use the command module list again and see it is completely empty. Now I can load or I can find where is the GCC modules using module avail GCC command which displays the information of all available GCC modules. So we have two different uh, modules available. Uh, one is GCC 4.9.3 and GCC 5.1.0. I can use the command module load GCC slash 4.9.3 enter and if I give give module list we can see the modules listed along with its dependencies. So these are the typical module commands module avail, module load, module name and module list is to uh, list out all the loaded modules. Module unload to unload a particular module module purge is to clean up the entire module files okay uh, so uh, let's get into the exercise number seven from workshop handbook so we can see uh, we are going to use the software environment of gcc and see what are the differences uh, with or uh, without loading the modules um just now okay now now if i do which gcc i can see gcc is located under slash app gcc 4.9.3 bin gcc and if i do module list I can see the GCC is loaded in, in here. If I don't want this module purge, if I give, and if I try to see which GCC is that, it's going to be from slash user bin GCC. So this is how we can load a module dynamically. So we have just seen uh, how to use module avail command, module avail composer XC, module avail GCC, module label load gcc module list and module load commands so we are gone we have uh, done through the exercise 7 so in the exercise 7 we can see here intel environment is with module uh, intel 19 or composer 19 different uh, names for the same compiler tool set um, compilation commands we have for serial it is ICC, um, for C compiler, iFort is the compiler for Fortran compiler and for parallel compilers we have MPI, CC, MPI, iFort. In the GNU environment we have OpenMPI GCC 493 1.10.4 as an example. Um, we have a compilation commands for serial we use GCC and GFortran. For parallel compilers we use MPI, CC and MPIF. 90 commands so um, basically mpi here is uh, inter um, mpi here um, if the program is capable of or it has a code to run parallelization across multiple nodes mpi commands will be helpful or mpi compilation will be helpful so gpu applications let's see here 
as I said earlier, we have a, a CUDA toolkit 10.1 available. So module avail CUDA lists the available CUDA versions and we can load a particular uh, CUDA version using module load CUDA slash 10.1 command which actually displays a message to compile with the CU plus invoke interactive job with GPU queue and compile the program there. So basically in the login nodes we don't have a GPU cards. So um, once you log into the system if you wanted to compile with certain tools in uh, CUDA which uh, requires CUDA drivers it is not possible to compile in login nodes. So you can create a login session or you can start an interactive job with um, uh, GPU nodes and compile your application there. Okay, let's start with the job submission. Now, um, let's go to the exercise 8 here before we start with the job submission. Um, let me create a um, C file. Probably I can just copy the file which is already there in slash app workshops. Introductory. We can find uh, some of the C files here. Hello.c which I'm going to copy here. Okay, let's see here. So we have hello.c available. I wanted to compile this with the GCC compiler. I can just module list. I make sure I don't have any modules available, uh, loaded already. So it seems CUDA 10.1 is already available. So I'm going to purge everything, module purge. And now I load GCC environment module load GCC. Now if I wanted to compile hello.c I just issue the command GCC hello.c and hyphen o uh, hello. So if I see the LS, um, ls command, I can see an executable which is created hello. So just to execute dot slash hello would be enough, which going to print hello world. So this is how we can use the GNU compiler tools. If for a bigger program, if it is a um, so downloaded from open source platforms or tools like GitHub or something, you might see some make files, configure script and little more complex compilation environment. If it is a program which is developed by you, you can create your own make files or you can do a simple compilation using the GCC commands. Okay, so uh, similarly we can um, do a MPI compilation also. Let me show an example of MPI uh, program. So I have an MPI uh, program available in slash app workshops. introductory mpi hello.c copy here to compile uh, a mpi program you cannot compile with uh, gcc compiler we need to have a intel compile intel mpi or open mpi compiler so let me do a module purge and let me find out which is the open mpi modules available I can do the command module avail and open MPI. And I can see if several versions of um, uh, open MPI is available. I'm going to choose open MPI GCC 10 point, 1.10.2 
and do module load and this command now that I have loaded it mod now MPI CC MPI hello dot C uh, MPI hello sorry hyphen O output file lamp MPA hello I can see the file which is created so if you wanted to see the file vi mpi hello dot c it is a standard c program with a little bit of additions from mpi um, header file or mpi programming where in um, in this particular case i'm just printing hello world um, from all the hosts so let's see how it executes mpi run hyphen enp 24 mpi hello dot slash mpi hello So it's simply it is printing MPA hello world from different processors. It's a very simple program, but there could be a complex programs which you can do it. This is just an example program which I have uh, created for you. Okay. Let's get into the exercise nine through job submission commands. Um, there are certain commands which we need to use or which are helpful for to know. Uh, Qsub, Qdel, Qstat, and Gstat. Qsub is the command which we use to submit the jobs. Qdel is this command which we can terminate a job which is already in the queue. Qstat is the command to see um, the status of the submitted jobs gstat it shows the entire jobs in the cluster for project management we can see my projects project summary or my usage commands which i have already shown in the example let's uh, uh, get to the exercise number eight we create a simple um, job submission script and we'll be submitting the job So uh, I have the example here in slash app workshop introductory inside here we have uh, several examples we can copy submit submit have an example one dot pbs script here and edit it with via submit hyphen example one dot pbs uh, let's see it's pretty simple uh, bash cell script wherein it starts with the slash exclamation uh, hash exclamation slash bin bash and it, uh, next line hyphen q normal and uh, select statement here hyphen l select equals to 1 and CPU is equals to 1 and memory is equals to 1 GB and I'm asking for a wall time of uh, 1 hour of course I know it doesn't take more than 30 seconds to execute this job so I can uh, reduce the time to maybe you know uh, a 40 seconds instead of 1 hour so how we can do it is zero zero and um, zero minutes and 
40 seconds hours minutes and seconds is the format for the wall time um, I also need to specify a project which I wanted to execute through PBS hyphen P I can just specify personal if you have any other projects which you wanted to use please please feel free to use it now once my job submission script is ready I do choose sub submit hyphen example one dot pbs so once this job is submitted we can see the job id printed here we can use the qstat command to see the status of the job once the job is finished the output files and output error files will be presented here okay we have seen the uh, submin.pbs file this is the job submission command um, job submission file and we have example dot e261941 which is my job id and there is an output file and error file there is no error generated we can see it's only zero bytes here and there is some output generated in the output file let's see what is the output says so it displays a epilog of the job wherein it shows the usage resource usage of um, the job um, in this case it's just uh, a sleep job it has, does not do anything it doesn't print anything so we don't see any standard output however it only displays the information about the job for example the job id the project which the job is submitted to the exit status number of cpus requested number of cpus used wall time is requested and wall time used how much memory we have requested and how much it is used and um, what are the execution nodes the job has executed in this is the overall procedure for a simple job submission we have several examples on um, job submission starting from um, uh, a sing simple serial job until a big complex MPI or array jobs let's get to the next slide we have uh, um, different job types which we wanted to refer interactive jobs um, job resources job dependencies job arrays parallel jobs or MPI integration file staging and stage out if you wanted to refer further so we have um, uh, another workshop which is supposed to be conducted for PBS specifically but in case if that is not there also you should be able to uh, know these topics through the job submission guide or PBS Pro Quick Start guide available in the help.nsc.sg user guides portal. So AI jobs points here to note um, GPU CPU ratio is 1 is to 5 in DGX servers or 8 um, GPUs and 40 CPUs which we need to choose only AI system supports docker images or containers um, uh, all the other system AI uh, I mean Aspire 1 and GPU nodes does not support docker containers docker does not have inherent environment variables from the shell so you will have to export specific variables anything if you wanted to put inside the docker container NSC docker is NSC docker is the customized command to use with docker images or docker containers so um, due to security reasons uh, we have to strip down the usage of an docker uh, commands and we have a wrapper which is to be used is nssc docker command um, nss available workflows is docker containers which is mostly recommended um, we developed singularity containers of course we try to do best with this um, however, we I am strongly suggesting to use uh, singularity containers nowadays because um, not um, it is recommended, but it is uh, because due to sec space constraints, we are uh, running out of disk space in DGX systems. Therefore, I suggest to use singularity containers wherein the performance 
why is it should not have any uh, difference from the docker containers as such um, application installed by users in home directory of course you can try that uh, we can search try to support uh, with the best effort basis containers uh, nssc docker images is the command which you can run to see the uh, docker images available um, nssc docker run and image name um, it is this is the replacement of the docker run command and singularity containers you need to use singularity exec and the image name let's see an example job submission script here Here the job submission script it starts with exclamation uh, uh, hash exclamation slash bin slash sh pbs hyphen l we are requesting a wall time of five minutes uh, pbs hyphen q we are requesting for the q named dgx and pbs hyphen p the project id which I am going to put here you need to change this project id to your own uh, project id please remember only the projects have uh, ai um, deposits can submit to DGX queues. No personal projects are allowed in uh, in uh, DGX queues. So um, the name of the pro uh, job submission here we are putting it as container. So PBS hyphen n container. So hash PBS are not the comments, but these are the directives for uh, PBS to execute. So PBS picks up the information from these lines and uses for as a metadata in uh, um, job. So uh, here we are going to use the image name as nvcr.io nvidia coda colon latest uh, nssc docker run image name and inside that we have uh, certain commands to execute. So what happens in this case is image is going to execute each of the command here starting from echo container starts in the directory pwd echo change directory to where the job was submitted cd uh, pbs underscore o underscore work dire pwd echo by default docker starts in the private network with the host name different to that of host operating system and host name echo nvidia smi all these comments are going to be executed within the image and finally the output is going uh, going to be displayed so um, the part between the two EOFs is the one which you need to change or you wanted to put a different image instead of nvcr.io nvidia coda latest you can choose your own docker image there. So um, some more examples you can find with the user guides AI quick, quick start uh, guide a system quick start guide. And some examples are in slash home projects AI examples directory. We have Docker images uh, which you can uh, use the command nssc docker command. Uh, for singularity images you can head over to slash home projects AI singularity nvcr.io slash nvidia or slash home project slash AI singularity nvcr.io slash nvidia uh, for more images in singularity which we have already created in case if you have a specific image which you want to pull from cloud uh, please feel free to do so in your home directory um, let me break in something and um, you know quickly go through some of the examples of job submission the first job submission example we have already seen with a simple example one script. Uh, let's do a little more uh, uh, submission through submit hyphen MPI or uh, uh, container job submissions also here. So uh, get back to this uh, terminal. So we I'm going to copy a file from slash app workshops introductory and uh, submit hyphen mpi dot pbs uh, i'm just copying it here i wanted to see the contents of this file so uh, let me explain what is written here the first line says uh, this is a bash script 
the second line is the name of the job which is mpi underscore hello and the third line it says the queue which i am going to submit this job to which is normal queue uh, pbs hyphen l means this is the resource request which we are asking pbs to allocate to us the, to this job select equals to m uh, select equals to 2 ncpu equals to 24 mpi prox equals to 24 so uh, let me explain a little bit more about this particular um, command syntax so select equals to 2 means 2 units of ncpu's 24 mpi prox 24 to be allocated to this particular job so if the select uh, is equals to the number if it is changing those many number of cps are going to be allocated which means uh, in case select equals to 1 this job will have um, will may be able to use 24 cpus if the select equals to 2 2 times 24 that means 48 jobs is going to be 48 processors are going to be allocated if it is the select equals to 10 we can use up to 240 cpus that means pbs is going to allocate up to 248 cpus and um, if we wanted to increase further we can go up to 3000 cpus also by using select equals to number so based on your job requirement application requirement you can change select equals to to number to uh, to expand whatever you want so one more thing we just need to add one more point in this that is uh, memory requirement select statement hyphen um, mpa prox column mp uh, sorry mem equals 96 gb so what happens is each node it's going to pick up 96 gb otherwise for the entire job it's going to allocate 96 gb which is not desired so we wanted 96 gb to be allocated in per node that's why we have to specify mem is equals to 96 gb here so the wall time we required for this particular job is um, uh, 10 minutes i'm putting it uh, the next line we can see cd pbs underscore o underscore work dire which means we are going to this particular work directory to execute this particular command now i have a, a module load composer xe and then i am running mpi run dot slash mpi hello dot intel so far we don't have this file here so let's let's, let's compose uh, I mean compile this particular uh, binary file here using these comments I have loaded uh, composer xe now again I have to compile mpi cc mpi hello dot c hyphen o mpi hello underscore intel so the file is compiled so the file is compiled and it is ready for execution let's make sure submit hyphen mpa dot pps file is invoking mpa hello dot underscore intel uh, file here you might notice something strange here with mpi run command i'm not giving any uh, command line arguments because this mpi run command is going to be integrated with pbs and pbs is going to supply the machine file and the ncpus which the mpa to execute so mpa is tightly integrated with pbs here so we just run mpa run and the executable name and it's going to pick up the host names and mpa procs for information from pbs let's submit this job Yeah, there is a mistake in this particular job so it's going to give you the information saying that 
if you are not specifying the project id it's going to use personal project for this um, um, job please don't be alarmed with this particular information this is just an information if you don't uh, if you are not uh, desired to use a personal project for this job you need to mention hyphen p the project id but in my case i am fine to use the personal project so i'm just leaving as it is now if i wanted to know the status of this qstat command prints the information whether the job is completed so the job is, seems to be completed that's why we don't see anything qstat hyphen x command gives the history of the commands if, uh, history of uh, um, job uh, pbs jobs in case if the jobs are already finished to if you wanted to see the information of that this job history is maintained for one hour only after one hour we cannot see this information anymore so if you wanted to know details of the pro job we have to use ls hyphen ltr to see find um, the mpi uh, the output and error files here so we can see there is no um, um, data in the error file which is of zero bytes however for mpi hello file we have certain content let's see what is there inside this now as we see when we are executing directly this mpi hello program it is displaying mpi hello world from pros sorry hello world I am processor number so and so from host X Y Z. So this is the information it is going to be displayed in this. So that is the output of the uh, MPI uh, um, executable. Below that we can see the uh, resource usage summary, uh, the job ID, the project which it is uh, used for this particular pro job, uh, how many CPUs we have requested, how many are used, and how much time the job took, and how much memory it has utilized. And what are the execution hosts used for this particular job? All right. So there is one important information which we need to know is qstat uh, hyphen xf. Let's say um, because the job is already finished, so I wanted to show you the information with the full output. So here we can see with the qstat hyphen ef job ID when you are giving. Uh, because the job is already finished I am giving hyphen X F otherwise just hyphen F if the job when the job is in the queue or the job is in running state we can give the command qstat hyphen F job ID which displays the same information or similar information wherein it shows lot of information about the job where the job is submitted um, how many, uh, what are the uh, resources requested by the job and uh, which are the nodes allocated for the job to run um, and many more information in this. Maybe you can just go through those um, details one by one and find out uh, if there is anything which makes sense to you. Okay, this is the example two. Let's uh, see the example number three which is the singularity based uh, tensorflow job um, let's see this we have the example script here in um, app workshops introductory cp slash app workshops So singularity hyphen tensor flow dot pbs. I'm going to copy that file here. Also, I'm going to copy slash app. Let's see what are the files required for this particular job. Okay. So when I edit the file, I can see what are the files required for this. It's going to use the singularity image in singularity images tensorflow tensorflow 1.11.0 hyphen gpu dot simg and there is a python and hello dot py file are required. So I need to make sure that hello dot py is here. So the hello dot py file is in uh, app workshops introductory 
directory again so I'm going to do that uh, copy of that file So other than that, I don't see any other files required for this particular job. So um, let's see what is there in hello.py file. So it's a simple Python script which imports a TensorFlow and just prints um, TF session and hello TensorFlow jobs. Alright, so we just need to submit the job again, qsub singularity-tensorflow.pbs Job ID is there, qstat if we give, we can find the job is in GPU normal queue. Now when I see qstat-af and the job ID, I can find the information which is useful for me to go through. So here we can see select number of GPUs is 1, um, select equals to 1 and GPUs equals to 1 and CPUs equals to 24, memory is 96 GB is requested and wall time is 1 hour requested. All the information is displayed here. I suspect this is going to say, take some time, maybe the resources are not enough um, for the job to run. So I let you uh, explore the uh, job with your own uh, self. You can submit the job and see how it goes on. So some of the references and uh, useful information is here. You can go to help.nssc.sg user guides and find NSSC job scheduler PBS Pro quick start guide for detailed information and examples on how to submit different types of jobs. Um, we have some corporate information and web portal support email address and project registration portable uh, portal uh, links are here which you can go through it. Let me head back to the presentation. Uh, so the next section which I'm going to show is the display miniature. This is the high-end uh, um, remote visualization software or tool which we are going to use in NSSC which is going to use the visualization nodes uh, in NSSC. So here, uh, as such I am connected currently to uh, NSSC VPN. I can use https colon slash slash aspireweb.nssc.sg to open uh, display manager. Well, point to remember um, for all users for uh, for example the users from uh, A star NTU NUS they have to refer their own organization or uh, respective URL to go through this one so once you log in here you need to type in the uh, user ID and password click on login
Okay, once we log into the page, we can see the uh, there are several applications available in the left side. Um, there are a few of the exam uh, applications already configured to use with. Uh, for example, Paraview or GLXPS. GLXPS is nothing. Uh, it's just to, uh, a demonstration of how the remote graphics visualization appears and looks like. And Paraview, which is uh, mostly known to many people and workbench is the software or tool used to you know uh, launch the ANSYS uh, workbench and we have a PyMall and Xterm also available. Let's see an example of GLX peers. Patients, it is going to take some time to open this session. So we'll have to wait for some time before it opens. So we can see um, the remote graphics visualization which is happening pretty fast. Um, uh, usually if you are doing X11 forwarding with uh, for any other applications, it's not going to be rendering so fast. But because this is a remote visualization, it's going to be super fast graphics rendering happens through this. So um, that's all for now uh, for this session. Okay, so uh, users uh, if you have any doubts or clarifications, please feel free to contact us um, through nssc help.nssc.sg. For events or workshops, we can try logging into the nssc.sg outro outreach events and workshops. Um, some of the announcements information which we put it here in help.nssc.sg announcements. So basically the maintenance information and stuff like that will be available in this particular page. So once again, here is the useful URLs or how you can contact us. Please feel free to contact us at help at nssc.sg. Write down, write down an email to us if you have any questions or clarifications on this. Thank you so much for joining this, this workshops.